No one fought harder for your right to vote than John Lewis. Here to speak about him and his legacy, we have one of our great mayors, Atlanta's Keisha Lance Bottoms. Mayor Bottoms, hello. I know that you are, you're recovering from the coronavirus. How are you feeling? Well, good evening. I feel really good, thank you for asking. My husband, on the other hand, is still having many of the lingering side effects that people talk about, but all in all, our family's doing great. Well, I'm glad to hear it, but boy, I think a lot of Americans are gonna be dealing with that for a long time. Hey, Mayor, I wanted to ask you something. Uh, how, is Atlanta ready for election day? We will be ready. And we are going to do everything that we can to make sure that voting goes smoothly. Uh, but we are encouraging people, if you can vote early in your state, to please do so. Early vote during the early vote. Perfect. Excellent advice. Over 40 states now allow some form of early voting. Okay, stay safe, Mayor. And I turn it over to you. Well, thank you, Julia. And good evening. I'm Keisha Lance Bottoms, a mother of four and mayor of Atlanta, Georgia, cradle of the civil rights movement. And like so many other cities, a place where the struggle for human dignity continues. I'm proud to have grown up in this city, educated in its public schools and blessed to have known our hometown heroes like Dr. Joseph Lowry, Dr. C.T. Vivian, and our teacher, our friend, our conscience, our congressman, John Lewis. He walked gently amongst us, not as a distant icon, but as a God-fearing man who did what he could to fulfill the as yet unfulfilled promise of America. People often think that they can't make a difference like our civil rights icons. But every person in the movement mattered. Those who made the sandwiches, swept the church floors, stuffed the envelopes. They too changed America and so can we. The baton has now been passed to each of us. We've cried out for justice. We have gathered in our streets to demand change. And now we must pass on the gift John Lewis sacrificed to give us. We must register and we must vote. In his parting essay written to us, Congressman Lewis expressed his pride in the activism that has swept our country. And he reminded us that if we fail to exercise our right to vote, we can lose it. There are those who are disgracefully using this pandemic to spread misinformation and interfere with voting, forcing many in 2020 to still risk their lives to exercise their sacred right to vote, a right that has already been paid for with the blood, sweat, tears, and lives of so many. So let's stand up for our children, our children's children, and for this great democracy that our ancestors worked to build, and let's vote. And let's organize to get others to vote with us. You can help make this happen by texting VOTE to 30330. We know how important it is that we elect real leaders like Joe Biden and Kamala Harris people of honor and integrity who hold justice close to their hearts and believe that the lives of my four black children matter. In the words of womanist poet Audre Lorde, your silence will not protect you. Congressman Lewis would not be silenced and neither can we. We cannot wait for some other time some other place, some other heroes. We must be the heroes of our generation because we too are America. Our votes can be 
our voice. There's something deep down within me, moving me, that I could no longer be satisfied or go along with an evil system. Life was extremely dangerous when we were growing up. John Lewis had the respect of everybody because he was the one who demonstrated the most courage. He'd been beaten and knocked down and get up and go to find another battle. John was focused on ending voter suppression and it wasn't that he was a great orator, it's that he was a great spirit. The power of spirituality and humility and the willingness to suffer rather than to inflict suffering. One of the things that John has taught us is that, yeah, you may have to sacrifice, but if you're sacrificing for a cause, something bigger than you, bigger than you, and you really believe in it, then you will have people following you. We do not get meaningful legislation out of this Congress. We will march through the South, through the streets of Jackson, through the streets of Danville, through the streets of Cambridge, through the streets of He is the singular figure that has tried to carry out the work of our nonviolent campaigns into the halls of Congress. From day one, John Lewis was a role model for the members of Congress, whether they were freshmen or here a long time, because he brought with him a kind of heft, a weightiness of, of purpose. I got arrested a few times during the 60s. <laughs> 40 times. And since I've been in Congress, another five times. The means by which we struggle must be consistent with the end we seek. Someone who has navigated thorny issues of policy, not by castigating alone, but by also encouraging people to be better than they think they can be. Today, we are considering a fair housing measure which not only protects our nation minorities, but it protects the needs of those with disabilities and families with children. How long do we have to wait before we decide to ban assault weapons? We have another opportunity to bring more of our citizens into political participation. I have on my marching shoes. That's right. I'm fired up. I'm ready to march. And all of these decades later, while he and others of his generation achieved much, we're still fighting against police brutality and fighting for our voting rights. And so we best honor him by continuing to fight the good fights that he fought, by staying in good trouble. community. We will redeem the soul of America. As a nation and as a people, we will get there. Climb to the night.